Hello, and welcome to the Dr. Rebecca Baxt podcast. I'm Dr. Rebecca Baxt, board-certified dermatologist, and I'm here to discuss with you all issues relating to the skin that you're in. In this podcast, we will tackle the topic of the day quickly to get you the take-home points that you need. After listening to an episode, you should be educated about the topic and able to fix the issue yourself or well-prepared to ask the right questions at your next dermatology appointment. Let's get started. Today, I'd like to talk about acne scars and treatment of acne scars. Before I get into this very large and complicated topic, I want to define some terms. I see patients with acne scars pretty much every day in my office, certainly every week. And a lot of times patients will come in complaining of acne scars But what they're really looking at are just post-inflammatory marks from where acne pimples have faded. To me, a scar is a permanent mark, and not all marks left over by acne are permanent. So the red and the brown marks are just that. They are marks. They sometimes lead to permanent scars, but they themselves are not permanent. Acne scars that are permanent tend to be one of two types. One is called an atrophic acne scar, and those are indented, and we will go over that in detail because those are the most common, and there are different types of atrophic acne scars. And there are also hypertrophic acne scars where they become elevated above the surface of the skin. Those are much more rare. Sometimes we see them on the shoulders, the chest, the jawline. Sometimes they can be red or brown. They're almost like a keloid, and those are treated like a keloidal scar with steroid injections and sometimes lasers. But those are much less common. We're going to be focusing mostly on atrophic acne scars. Atrophic acne scars cause a depression in the skin. The indentation can be many different shapes and depths, and it's caused really by a lack of collagen or a damage to the collagen that has happened as a result of the inflammation from the prior bad acne breakout. These types of scars are usually caused by cystic acne. Sometimes the cysts can be very small, but the cysts are what cause the inflammation, hard red bumps, and lead to scarring. There are three main types of atrophic acne scars. The smallest, but also often the deepest, are called ice pick scars, and they have a very narrow indentation, and they sometimes look like a large pore, but they are actually acne scars, and they go fairly deep. Ice pick scars are the hardest to treat. There are also rolling scars and boxcar scars that are atrophic indented acne scars. They are larger and more broad, and those are much easier to treat than the ice pick variety. Atrophic acne scars have many different treatments. I will go over my favorites and also include some other modalities that can help. In my office, I usually offer patients with indented or atrophic acne scars, both lasers and fillers, which work very well for boxcar and rolling atrophic acne scars, which are the most common types of scars. Laser resurfacing with a Fraxel laser or another laser can help stimulate collagen to grow and improve the scars. I will often do three to five Fraxels in a row, once a month, which can cause a significant amount of redness and swelling for a few days afterwards. And then once we have completed that, I will follow it up with some fillers. Fillers accomplish many things for atrophic acne scars. First, when they are placed, they are placed with a needle. So as I am injecting the scar with a filler, I am doing subcision, which is pushing a needle through the scar tissue, and this helps break up the scar tissue and stimulate collagen to grow. Then the filler goes in with the injection and causes an immediate improvement because it helps fill in the scarred atrophic area. Then the filler, which is made in my office of hyaluronic acid, I use HA hyaluronic acid fillers for this. Hyaluronic acid stimulates collagen to grow. So we have the subcision, which stimulates collagen, the filler, which improves the appearance and also stimulates collagen to grow. And so when you do it repeatedly, I often will do this every six months, we get a lot of collagen stimulation and the acne cars improve significantly. And I have a lot of patients who will, for maintenance, do one Fraxel a year and one filler treatment a year. Either we do the Fraxel in the winter and the fillers in the summer, or we just do the Fraxel and a month or two later do the fillers. I do have some patients who come every six months, and that is aggressive, but the results are great. And really, the other advice that I give people is to avoid sun, because we know that the sun can also degrade collagen. 
and often a retinoid cream for long-term use. Retinoids can decrease the top layer of the skin. It can help the appearance of the acne scars. For the ice pick scars, we often try TCA cross therapy, which is a high concentration of trichloroacetic acid dropped with a Q-tip or a toothpick into the scarred area. And it is sometimes successful, but not always. There is definitely downtime associated with it. It can cause a lot of redness and irritation. If there are just a few bad ice pick scars, I will often recommend having a plastic surgeon just cut them out because there's almost no way to completely get rid of that scar other than removing it. And if you can cut it out and trade the indentation for a teeny tiny scar that is a tiny line and at least flush with the surface of the skin, many patients prefer that. So really, every scar is different, each scar on every person, and some ice pick scars are amenable to surgery and some aren't. So TCA cross therapy, they are improved a bit with the Fraxel and the fillers or laser and fillers that I talked about previously, just not as much as the more broad rolling or boxcar scars. Topical retinoids that I also mentioned can also help as they thin the surface of the skin and make the scar look less deep. So retinoids and sun avoidance and sunscreen are important for long-term improvement and prevention. There are other treatments for acne scars, and the main one is microneedling. Microneedling does work to reduce acne scars. I do not use it in my office, as when we started with it many years ago, I had a couple of patients have persistent redness from it. It took me a long time to make them better, and I just find that while microneedling is not that expensive and very popular, I just prefer to stick to the treatments with minimal to no side effects, and I've gotten such great results over the years between the Fraxel laser also sometimes clear and brilliant laser, which is like a baby Fraxel, chemical peels, and fillers that I just don't feel the need to use microneedling. That said, there's nothing wrong with it, and a lot of people like that modality for acne scars, so I thought I would mention it. One question that I often get from patients is they ask me, is this a permanent fix for their scars? And while I can honestly tell them that the laser does make a permanent change in the skin, and while fillers are definitely not typically permanent, The body keeps aging over time, and as we age, we lose collagen. So acne scars sometimes look worse over time, to be honest. There are some types of scars that look better over time. Acne scars tend to look a bit worse over time. And so I do find that patients need to do treatments over time to keep themselves looking good like they want to. It's not a one-and-done type of treatment, and it does require ongoing maintenance. I would also add that... Sometimes the acne scars don't even show up until later in life. I have patients who start to first see their acne scars in their 50s and sometimes even their 60s from an old breakout that they had years ago. And as they lose collagen in their face, all of a sudden you can see the acne scars. So sometimes acne scars have late onset as well. I'd also like to mention briefly the white acne scars. And these are often on the body, not as much on the face, although occasionally on the face, but on the body, I will typically see very small white dots from old acne, usually an old acne cystic breakout from a long time ago. Sometimes people cause these also just from picking. So obviously picking is never a good idea with acne, but typically it's just from an old acne breakout. These white scars are very, very difficult to change. And so I usually make them look better by treating the entire area of the skin and trying to sort of fade everything and even out the skin tone. So chemical peels, laser resurfacings, retinoid creams, sunblock, sometimes bleaching creams. At this point in time, we do not have a great fix for those permanent small white scars. Now I'd like to shift gears and talk about acne marks. So after an acne breakout, the acne can often leave a red mark. The red mark can often just fade away on its own, or it can turn brown and then fade away on its own, or it can turn into an acne scar. So when I see those red marks, I usually recommend a pulse dye laser treatment if it's possible. Pulse dye laser or another laser that works on red things or red marks or intense pulse light is another option, helps remove the redness, and it also helps reduce the risk that that red mark will become a permanent scar. It's hard for me to quantify this, but it is a well-known thing that helping 
remove the redness faster with a laser and the laser energy that is absorbed by the skin that is inflamed and red helps reduce the risk of scarring later. So this will work with a pulse dye laser or intense pulse light or another laser that works on red marks, sometimes a KTP laser. I will often do one or two treatments on the red spots and then once they have faded, move on to other things such as Fraxa laser or chemical peels or fillers or whatever it is, but I do like to do pulse dye laser for those red marks. I will often wait until the acne has calmed down and do it all at once, but it is possible to do it earlier if needed. Acne marks can also be brown or hyperpigmented, darker than the regular skin around it. And sometimes the red marks can become brown or they just start as brown. And the brown marks I will get to fade with sun protection, so sunscreen, hats, etc. Chemical peels work great to fade the brown. And there are lots of creams that can help fade the brown. In fact, there are two creams that can help reduce the acne and the brown marks at the same time. And those are topical retinoids, such as Retin-A or Differin, and azelaic acid. I also find glycolic acid and salicylic acid can be helpful. And it can take months, but these brown marks do fade. Sometimes we can use prescription hydroquinone as a spot treatment or Suspera, which is another cream to help reduce hyperpigmentation. I did an entire episode just on treating hyperpigmentation, which might be worth listening to if this is your issue. So look for my podcast on the treatment of hyperpigmentation. In summary, acne scars is a very large topic, but I tried to break it down. Acne marks tend to be red and brown. Those can go away on their own. They can be sped up in their healing with lasers, chemical peels, creams, intense pulse light. Once we get a permanent acne scar, it usually falls into a hypertrophic, which is a thickened, elevated skin, which responds to laser and injections, or atrophic, which means indentations, which can respond to TCA cross therapy or laser resurfacings or fillers or a combination of all of those things, as well as microneedling. Acne scars are very amenable to treatment. The best thing to do is get yourself or your family member or friend who is suffering with this to a great board certified dermatologist who has a lot of experience in treating acne and acne scars, and hopefully you will get fantastic results. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Dr. Rebecca Bax podcast. I'm Dr. Rebecca Bax, board certified dermatologist. I hope this episode was informative and that you enjoyed listening. If you found this podcast useful, please give us a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. It helps others find us so we can help them too. Just a caveat to remember, this is not medical advice and please see your dermatologist or doctor for questions pertaining to your specific situation. I look forward to talking with you again in the next episode.